Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Two years ago, LEGO celebrated its 90th anniversary with some very cool nostalgia sets like the Galaxy Explorer and the Lion Knight's Castle. Last year, we had the Eldorado Fortress, which was also a revival of a classic set. Apparently, LEGO is still riding the nostalgia bandwagon because this year we get the 10332 Medieval Town Square. It's a bit different, but still has a lot in common with the earlier nostalgic sets, in my opinion. As you can see, the box this time has the standard icons design, which is different from the box of the castle, for example. We have a lot of buildings and figures, but I don't think the subject really matches this black background. There's a lot of detail on the back, and there's a funny little flaw in the official photos that thankfully isn't present on the real box. The box art doesn't fit perfectly, and you can see the bare cardboard underneath. Let's open the box. The set has 3,304 pieces, the price is 230 euros or dollars, and it will be available for LEGO Insiders from the 1st of March. To check all other currencies, please use the link in the top right corner or in the description. The box contains 25 numbered bags, an unnumbered one with the larger plates, and a thick paper envelope. We get two manuals and a sticker sheet, there are quite a few stickers as I see. The beginning of the manual is pretty interesting and has something unusual about it. It tells the short story of the town and the characters. The set was heavily inspired by set number 10193 from 2009, the medieval market village. It's not necessarily a modern interpretation of the classic, such as the Galaxy Explorer, but the main features are similar. A few words from the designer on the next page and then we can start building. We start with a few smaller builds, a stand for the cheesemaker, a lathe for the carpenter, making a table's leg, more furniture and a chair. The first room we build is for the carpenter. I really like the door with the matching key, I've never seen that before. There is one small anomaly though that I spent almost an hour on. We have all these accessories that clearly have their place, but the manual doesn't show us where to put them. Later, everything that belongs in the rooms is shown in the manual, but not for this one. The only hint you can get is on the box, that's how we are supposed to arrange things. I find this a rather strange mistake, something that slips through quality control once again. Here's the next level, which houses almost all of the mechanical functions of the set and it's pretty cool. First of all, we have this crane and the ratchet. This room is kind of like a warehouse for the carpenter, so with the crane you can manage things. Then we have a trapdoor with a ladder, another lever holds it in place, and when you open the door you can fold out the ladder sections, a very clever solution. The roof looks pretty simple from the outside, but there's a lot of snot action going on inside, it might be a little tricky to put it together, and then find the right position. Here's a nice little wooden cart, maybe the carpenter is busy fixing it up. The next building belongs to the tapestry weaver. The roof is very similar to the one in the Lion Ice Castle and cannot be removed. I like the green door on this side and there are lots of details behind the building too. There are a few colorful spools of yarn in there and a very nice and detailed loom with a tapestry inspired by the 375 castle set from 1978. As you can see, this loom has its place in the building. The two buildings are connected with hinges and then secured with these elements. The next building is the cheesemaker's workshop. This build has most of the animals in the set, here we have the famous goat in dark bluish grey. Having had a goat in the collectible minifigure series 25 already, this isn't much of a surprise, but still nice to see it here. As the designer told us, they were waiting for the right set to bring us back the goat, and since the cow was in the castle set and the cheesemaker needed milk, it was time for the goat to return. We also have a squirrel outside and a cat inside, with lots of cheese and all the accessories you need to make them. I really like all the details in this section, and as far as I know the square door with the window is a new piece. The roof is again a bit tricky to put in place. We need to attach this section to the previous ones using the same technique as before. Here is a lock to cut and the tree in the middle of our little town. There are several signs hanging on the tree, we seem to have a dangerous dragon lurking around, a wanted sign and a goat for sale. This is actually quite funny, as there were multiple references to the missing goat in previous sets, such as the Ninjago City Markets, and this one was added before the designers decided to actually include the goat in the set. The price reduction could be a nod to the secondary market, as I suspect the item won't be as expensive after these releases. The second half of the build is constructed in one go. This part is less modular, here we can only remove the roof. This part can also be completely closed, 
There are quite a lot of details and different styles mixed on the outside. The roof is again similar to the castle, and the tower is also built in the same style. The stairs leading up to the tower are quite narrow though, you can't go up there with a minifigure. This is the access to the top, and there is also a bed hanging here. The room downstairs belongs to the shield maker, we have a lot of accessories, paint everywhere, but also some viking vibes with Thor's hammer and the shield, that was intentional from the designer. There is also a brand new design here, the queen's shield. The space above belongs to the guard I think, he must be in shape because the door is quite narrow, just like the stairs. On the other side we have the broken axe in with the obligatory accessories. The chessboard is actually a printed piece that was only used in a single Minecraft set last year. Upstairs we have the kitchen with lots of food, turkey, crab, bread, fish, it looks nice. The room above with the removable roof belongs to the tax collector, he has a secret stash where he keeps the money he forgot to give to the queen. So that was the build, here are all the minifigures, we have some nice designs with new prints, I'm sure castle fans will be super excited to see a member of the Wolfpack faction. So this is the finished set, I think it looks good, lots of detail on the outside, same on the inside with a decent amount of minifigures. If we close the buildings, the first one looks pretty coherent, the second one probably has a bit too much going on with all the different colors and styles. I really respect the effort to create a story behind the figures, although I feel like the designer had more to tell than we've seen in the instructions. Despite all this and the characters, the set still feels like a display piece. There are far too many small parts to accidentally tear off when trying to play with the set and accessing some of the rooms is quite a challenge. There weren't many building techniques shown in this video and that wasn't just because of the large pile of Technic and Speed Champion sets waiting for me, but also because apart from a few areas like the carpenter storage room, everything was fairly simple and straightforward. Don't get me wrong, there are lots of nice details that look great, but the set didn't have the same tricky angles and challenging but impressive sections as the Lion Knight's castle, I miss that part of the 18 plus building experience. All in all, I think castle fans will be happy with the set, it's a nice addition to the previous castle, if you have enough space to display them together of course. Please let me know your thoughts folks in the comment section, if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications because more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.